Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Another day, another morning of abuse towards the Celtic board on Twitter. Just every week nowadays, isn't it? Let's talk about that. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, it would be much appreciated, we're trying to get towards 50,000 subs this year if we possibly can, so if you haven't already, drop down below, hit those buttons, it's absolutely free. We've got a busy few weeks coming up on the channel, so if you want to stay up to date with everything that's happening at Celtic Football Club, including those split fixtures in the Scottish Cup final on the 25th of May, well you know where to come, right here, so like and subscribe. Yep, I said it in the intro to the video, it just feels normal nowadays to wake up, go on social media and see abuse being hurled towards the Celtic board. Um, some questionable decisions being made over the past few years, including this season. And another one of those ones uh, could be coming soon, if reports are to be believed. Yep, there was an article put out this morning by the Daily Record. This was the headline, Celtic under-18s manager Hunt sees Charlie Mulgrew and Johnny Hayes in the mix to secure a Parkhead return. The article goes on to say that Johnny Hayes and Charlie Mulgrew are in the frame to be Celtic under-18s boss. Celts are on the lookout for a new coach after Stuart McLaren left at the turn of the year and the former Parkhead players are among the candidates. Hayes has been coaching in Aberdeen's academy this season, assist assisting at under-16 level while continuing his player career. Now, as we know, Charlie Mulgrew retired quite recently from professional football in the last couple of years now, taking up the full-time podcasting and media gigs. Meanwhile, Johnny Hayes, he's still been playing but hasn't featured for Aberdeen since February in senior action and started a coaching role there, as the article goes on to say. But now, both of these guys, former Celtic players, Charlie Mulgrew and Johnny Hayes, being linked with the open post as Celtic under-18s manager, which has not went down well online. Now, a lot of you might be looking at this article and watching this video thinking, what's the big deal, Ryan? It's only the under-18s management role. It's not the end of the world. We're hardly giving them the, the full-time gig and uh, replacing Brendan Rodgers this summer. But I think that this is another potential decision. Let's get one thing clear here. This isn't definite. This is an article speculating that Charlie Mulgrew or Johnny Hayes or, or both could be in these positions soon. It's not a definite, it's speculation. But I think this is another article following on from the news surrounding Darren O'Day last week that is just ruffling the favours of the Celtic support and really proving a lot of what we've been saying over the past few years in regards to the way that Celtic go around their recruitment in key areas. And I can completely understand why fans are frustrated. If anything, I am on the side of fans when it comes to the, this level of frustrations for a club that's meant to be progressive and trying to develop. Are we going down the right route just handing jobs to former players and pals of the club? That is something that is worth being questioned. If you're wondering what the Darren O'Day stuff is, this was what happened last week. We did cover this in the channel on Monday afternoon, but Darren O'Day was appointed uh, in a new position at the club, uh, the position of professional player pathway manager with the aim of developing the progression of players at the club. Reporting to the head of Celtic's Youth Academy in this important new role, Darren will work with Brendan Rodgers, the head of academy coaching, the club's B team and academy coaches, ensuring the effective development of players to play for Celtic. This is obviously a very big appointment in an area for Celtic which we have not been delivering on for a number of years now, an area at the club which has been neglected you could say there hasn't been a clear pathway for, for players coming from the under 18s or the B team to move into the senior squad and succeed, we haven't been developing um, or producing the right quality of player to come through and a lot of people weren't happy when they seen that Darn O'Day, someone who was underperforming in his role as B team coach, being handed what you would say is quite an important role. So now to follow that up with rumours to suggest that Charlie Mulgrew and Johnny Hayes too, and I mean it with all due respect, inexperienced coaches being linked with a job which can obviously impact young players at the club, has, has got people up in arms. Can I just add in this side note very, very quickly, when I say inexperienced, I mean at this level, because we're talking about ultimately two former professional players, one who's retired, one who's near retirement, and they've obviously had 
parts of their career in later years where there's been elements of coaching involved. They've probably coached at youth levels before, but for a club like Celtic, I think you know what I mean. I'm trying to be as respectful as possible. Who am I to judge? I'm a fat, specky twat who sits behind a camera talking about Celtic. I'm hardly in a place to judge experience levels, but I think you can get what I mean. I decided that today, instead of me just ranting about the board and ranting about anybody in particular, I would actually ask for your opinion before I get into mine, because I think it's nice to get some voices on the channel sometimes. So I put this post up earlier on, um, on the community section of the YouTube channel, asking for your opinions uh, in regards to the rumours that have been floating around. Uh, if Charlie McGrew or Johnny Hayes was to get this job. So here's some of them that I want to go through right now. First off, Ryan Gray says, Can't believe we're letting Charlie McGrew run anything. Which is a which is a start to say the least. Yep, that's that's that sums it up. Um user WS3 so on and so forth says always going to be the same with this board, although we do have some good young players who don't get a chance anyway. Mike says, I'd like to hear what the process was, who else they spoke to and why they settled for 4x players to make a broken youth system work, what experience do they have, what's their plan and what's their vision. Logan Paul, and not United States champion Logan Paul, who funnily enough is, is on this shot. Not Logan Paul, um, just a, a random subscriber has said, we as a support need to accept that under this current board, the best we can hope for is success in Scotland, and we just need to hope that Rangers keep consistently making massive mistakes. Uh, Conlow Rocks says, they weren't standout players, nor professionals, in my opinion. We hear talk of standards and mentality, so apply that here. It's a nonsense, which actually makes a bit of sense when you listen to some of the stories you get told on Open Goal and all the rest of it. Now, I, for one, am not going to use that as an example for my opinion in today's video, but to have those reservations, I think, is completely justified. There's nothing wrong with players having a personality around them and having a life and having a bit of fun in their careers, because we all know that they do, and they should, because they're human beings as well. But if we're wanting to improve the academy, is there better options out there? That's a question to be considered. Uh, and finally, Mark Rose, he said, whole youth and scouting system is a joke. Not helped by the rules up here where Premier League teams can snatch all of their talent. But to be honest, not impressed with the quality of kids coming through. You want top players and you want top coaches. Uh, we're wasting money and time by being unprofessional. So... I think you can see the general consensus from the majority of comments I've picked out on this post that fans aren't happy. And if you go and look at the replies on like the, the records post or the article on, on social media, you see Celtic fans kind of coming together with the same sort of opinions. And, and that is that we are making appointments that seem cheap, easy, and really bare minimum effort being put in. One of the comments I brought up on screen a minute ago about the process of hiring these people, what is it? Because surely there has to be experienced guys out there, people who have done the job elsewhere and people who we can actually sound out and pay a decent wage to come in and help develop and change our youth academy rather than giving it to people that just used to play for the club. There surely has to be a process and, and, and competition for these places because it can't just be as easy as what everybody's dubbing it, a job for the boys. I think to have the attitude towards this that it's not a big deal is ultimately a dangerous one. And you might think it's not a big deal, but this is something that reeks of sheer laziness for me. It's something that just comes across of, uh, with a complete lack of imagination um, from the Celtic board to go out there and make appointments that they know will satisfy probably their pockets and satisfy the bare minimum job that they've been doing for years now. Whereas this is an area that has been neglected and underperformed for, I would say, over a decade now. We have produced very little amounts of quality players year by year in this Youth Academy of ours. We have. There are some really good footballers in there. And there's been some people who have been unlucky not to make it at Celtic and maybe their careers went down another path. We've also had the odd couple of players, guys like Ben Doak, who have been poached by clubs like Liverpool at a really young age and we can't really do much about it. But in general, the youth academy at Celtic, the B team at Celtic, and the progression of transforming these players into first team, quality additions, has been 
very much below par for a long, long time now. And for me, the solution to that isn't appointing Charlie Mulgrew, Johnny Hayes and Darren O'Day in key roles to the club. And I mean that with all due respect to them. I, I want to make that perfectly clear. I have a, a great amount of respect for all three. Now, if you remember, in fact, I loved Johnny Hayes. I was maybe Johnny Hayes' biggest fan and I'd love to see him back at Celtic in a capacity. But in a role such as this, and the same goes for Mulgrew and O'Day, I just think it's really lazy from the club when they should be sounding out people who have got experience in these roles and have a genuine vision and a resume to give up that suggests that they can help make a difference to what we're doing. Because I don't see that being Charlie Mulgrew down the day and Johnny Hayes that's making that difference. And who knows, maybe in five years' time I'll come back and eat my words. Maybe I'll need to apologise, maybe I'll need to own up to the fact that they have transformed that but I think that there has got to be people out there who are more suited and more equipped for this job than, you know, Charlie Mulgrew who's on open goal, Johnny Hayes who's very early into his coaching career and Darren O'Day who hasn't exactly been lighting it up with the B team. I really do think there's more qualified people out there. For years we have been berating the board for nepotism hires at the club and appointments that have just not worked out in bigger areas than this, I would say. And it's look how it's came back to, to, to bite them in the face. People have moved on, people have resigned from roles, people have been sacked. It hasn't worked out. So to be so lazy in a process such as this, where you're really looking at the future of the club being at stake, to take such a kind of lackadaisical approach and such an unserious approach for me when it comes to picking people for these jobs, it just doesn't make sense. It's like they almost crave the, the, the dissatisfaction of Celtic fans. They, 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 they really want us to be moaning at them. It's like a humiliation kink or something. And uh, I, I just don't see anything changing like that. We, we talk about wanting to be a world-class football club with world-class departments in every area, recruitment, footballing, youth. We're not going to have any of that. We're not going to attain anything towards those levels when we're not making appointments that really show ambition for us to move forward. And that is the exact reason why Celtic fans are bothered about this, why they're moaning about this, and why I think if you're unbothered by it, it you should be. I need to reiterate the point that this this article doesn't mean that Charlie Mulgrew and Johnny Hayes are going to be the management figures at the under-18s anytime soon. It's a rumour they might go out and make another appointment. But these are the types of appointments that we have come to expect at Celtic Football Club. And that, for me, is an issue. That, for me, is a problem because it shouldn't be the type of appointments that we're expecting. I don't... You've got to make it clear as well. I don't think it's possible for Celtic to go out and get the best of the best. I'm not expecting a world-class, elite-level coach to come in and take over our under-18s. But even in this country alone, I think there are far more suitable candidates for the job than Charlie Mulgrew and Johnny Hayes and I'm not in a position to be making these sort of decisions and I know that, you know that, we all know that so if we know it, why does the Celtic board not know it and why do they treat all of these different departments which they want to be world class in like they are unimportant, like they will handle themselves is there a mentality within the board that Celtic are the best in the country right now and that is enough? Yes. Because that's been the case for 20 years. <laughs> and it doesn't look as though it's going to change anytime soon. Um, it's frustrating, it's lazy, um, and ultimately, that's what it is. <laughs> I'm actually lost for words. And you know what? It doesn't fill me with confidence for this head of recruitment role which is still to be filled. You know, who's going to come in and, and take that? George Samaras. Like, what's what's next for that? Because Mark Lawwell's job is still to be filled. Um, and, and I was hoping that we'd go out and make a sort of... I don't want to use the term statement approach because it's not like bringing in somebody that we've never heard of anyway is going to be a statement when we don't know them. But someone with pedigree and a resume behind them. But are we just going to go and appoint somebody else that's either a, a relative of the Celtic board or a former player of the club? Because I'm starting to expect that for what is one of the biggest roles that's open at Celtic right now. <sighs> Tiresome. Well, that's that for today. Let me know your opinions. 
in the comments below. I'll be interested to hear what you have to say. I feel like most Celtic fans are on the same page with this one. Um, yeah. Yeah. A bit, a bit tiresome, is all I can say. If you've enjoyed, like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.